Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity, and welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is number 23, Julian the Apostate. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the orange time period which we have named Establishment. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can always find them on our website. Make sure to cut out the circle of Julian the Apostate and paste it to your timeline. The conversion of the Roman Emperor Constantine to the Catholic faith was a huge and important event. It ended the persecution of Christians in the Roman Empire and gave the Catholic Church an important status among the Roman citizens. Constantine and his mother, St. Helena, paid money for the construction of beautiful churches throughout the whole empire, from Rome to the city of Constantinople and to Jerusalem and beyond. We have learned about Constantine and St. Helena building churches in some previous videos. We have also learned that after Christianity became legal, some heresies emerged, such as Arianism. Heresy is a dangerous thing. Heretics are those who are baptized as Catholics, but later deny some part of the Catholic faith. Arianism was so widespread that some of the emperors after Constantine became Arians themselves. And this was a big problem in the early centuries of the Catholic Church's history. Today, I want to talk about another Roman emperor who was very unique, but not in a good way. His name was Julian, and we also call him Julian the Apostate. An apostate is someone who is baptized a Catholic, but later rejects Christ and his church altogether. Apostates are different from heretics, because heretics usually only deny one or a few beliefs of the faith. Heretics usually still call themselves Christians, but they believe wrong things about Christ or his church. Apostates, on the other hand, reject the whole Catholic Church, and they also deny that Christ is God. Julian the Apostate chose to reject the Church completely and he wanted to return to the old paganism of the Roman Empire. He wanted to go back to worshipping the pagan false gods of Rome, like Jupiter or Venus, Mars, or the other ones. Julian was the nephew of Emperor Constantine. He was raised a Christian, but when he was young, he started to doubt the Catholic faith, and he read many books by the old Roman pagan authors. In time, he secretly denied the faith to himself. And then he started to practice the evil practice of magic, which is from the devil himself. That is why we call him an apostate. He became the emperor of the whole Roman Empire in 361 AD, which was a big problem for the Catholic Church. As the emperor, he had a lot of power and influence. He stopped funding the Catholic Church and he started to build old pagan temples again. He did everything he could to make Catholics seem ridiculous and absurd, and to make the pagans seem intelligent and honorable. Julian did not start another horrible persecution of Catholics, like Emperors Diocletian and Decius did, but he did try to stop the spread of Christianity. He would argue with Christian bishops and priests in public, hoping he would convince many Romans to not become Christians or to abandon their faith and go back to paganism. But Julian failed. He failed to stop the spread of Christianity. He was the last pagan Roman emperor to ever rule Rome. When he died, the next emperor was a Catholic named Jovian. The days of pagan Rome died when Julian the Apostate died. It wouldn't be long in 380 that the Roman Emperor Theodosius would proclaim that the Catholic faith was the only religion for the Roman Empire. Now Mrs. Charity will tell you about Julian's last words right before he died in battle. 
Hello, I am Mrs. Charity. Julian the Apostate was a bad Roman emperor because he tried to stop the spread of Christianity. The Catholic Church is necessary to go to heaven and avoid the eternal fires of hell. Julian wanted to prevent Romans from being Catholic, which would send them to hell instead of heaven. That was a very evil and horrible thing to do. Julian failed to stop the Catholic Church from growing, and he knew it. When he was dying, he said, Thou hast conquered, Galilean. Our Lord was born in Galilee, which is part of the Holy Land. Julian's words meant that our Lord had defeated him. Julian could not stop the church or our Lord. Our Lord, the Galilean, had conquered the Roman emperor, Julian the Apostate. Welcome back. I have a true story for you today about Julian the Apostate and his attempt to challenge the Catholic Church. You may not know this, but in the Gospels, our Lord told the Apostles that the temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed. And this happened in 70 AD by the Romans. Well, Julian thought that if he rebuilt the temple 300 years later, that he could show that our Lord was wrong and not really God. But something amazing happened when Julian tried to rebuild the temple. Let me tell you all about it. Julian the Apostate was determined to prove that the Galilean was not God. He had a plan to rebuild the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, which had been destroyed by the Romans centuries ago. He thought that by doing so, he would show that the prophecy of the Galilean was false and that the old gods of Rome were still supreme. He gathered a large army and marched to Palestine, where he met with the Jews. He promised that his support and protection and asked them to join him in this project of rebuilding the temple. Well, of course, the Jews, who wanted their temple to be rebuilt, were happy about this. They gathered workers and materials and tools and began to clear the site for the temple to be rebuilt. But as soon as they started to dig, strange things start to happen. First, fire burst out of the ground, burning the workers and the tools. Earthquakes shook the land, toppling the walls and the columns. Stones flew in the air, hitting the soldiers and the bystanders. A loud voice thundered from the sky, saying, Stop, Julian, stop! You cannot undo what God has done. Julius was furious and he was scared. He refused to believe that this was the work of God. He thought it was a trick of the Christians or a curse of the Jews. He ordered his men to continue the work, despite the dangers and the losses that he had. He said, We will not be deterred by these signs and wonders. We will show the world that we are in control and not the Christian God, and the gods of Rome are with us. But the more he persisted, the more the disasters increased. The fire became hotter, the earthquakes became stronger, and the stones became larger. The voice from the sky repeated its warning louder and angrier. The workers fled away, they were scared to death, and the Jews renounced their alliance with Julius, and the soldiers rebelled against their emperor. Julian had to stop his project. He was not able to rebuild the Jewish temple because God had stopped him. The moral of the story is this. You cannot defeat or outsmart the true God. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present. He is the only God. He always has been and always will be forever and ever. Well, thanks for watching today. Make sure to join us in our next video when we talk about Clovis, the barbarian king who converted to the Catholic faith. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website www.gloriousheritagecartoons.com where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. 
We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And see you next time 